Call to order the uh, school committee meeting for March 1st, 2022, 7 o'clock. Um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moment of silence. Thank you. The listing of matters on the agenda are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at the meeting. Not all items listed, in fact, may be discussed, and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting will be live streamed for cable. A recording of this meeting will also be posted on the West Bridgewater Community Access Media website, wb-cam.org. And right into it, business, the FY23 budget. Mr. Bodwell. All right, thank you, Mr. Flynn. Uh, first, I just want to thank uh, Mrs. Grant and all our administrators for all their hard work in putting the FY23 budget together. It's a, it's a, it's a massive undertaking. Uh, everyone works really hard, so we're proud to present it to you tonight uh, and provide you a little bit of overview before we go line by line throughout the budget. Um, you know, this is, again, a mission-driven budget. Um, and it, it really exemplifies all the mission of the West Bridgewater Public Schools is to work together with home and the community to provide our students a safe environment which to acquire the knowledge, skills, and values needed for success in a diverse and global society of the 21st century. So everything really focuses back on that. And when we look at our budget, um, everything really comes into play. I mean, obviously it starts with the parameters of the budget that we need with a, with a funding amount. Then we look at our district priorities. Um, we look at our goals, my goals, the administrator goals, and the educator goals. We look at the social emotional health of our students and our staff. And then we obviously look at student achievement. And it flows all around. It's not one single thing. It's really a combination of everything that goes into building this comprehensive budget uh, for the students and staff for FY23. This is a needs-based budget. It's not wishes or wants. It's a needs-based budget for our school district. Um, there aren't requests in here that we don't need. They're all essential to us to fund the educational programs that will provide our students with the best education possible. Uh, again, that's our focus. Um, we need these things that we're asking for. When we look at building our budget, I think over the past few years, um, I think we've been providing last year and through this year for the essentials. And we've been somewhat reacting to the needs of our district. That's understandable that we'll, we would be doing that, looking at what our needs are through COVID and all it brought with the hybrid learning, uh, mental health needs of our students and our staff. Looking ahead, looking to the future, we're working to develop a vision uh, for an innovative learning environment uh, to prepare our students for the future. I think that we want to expand and extend the things that we're doing. Uh, everyone is working so hard. Our educators, our kids, and our families are supporting us. So we want to make this the best school district possible. That's why we're looking for the funds that we're requesting. I think it's important every year to talk about school choice. It is one of our major school contributions. Uh, on the slide, you can see where we are over the past five years in terms of applications. Um, so the, the interest is strong in the West Bridgewater school system, and that's a credit to everyone. Um, kids and families want to send their children here, and we're very proud of that. I, can sit in, I sit in the superintendent's office, and I hear people call uh, continually asking, have we made decisions yet? Have we done the lottery? Uh, I, I hear people's joy when they're dropping off applications. So I think it's a, it's a great um, accomplishment to have so many people want to be in the West Bridgewater Public Schools. The next slide shows the enrollment, the new school choice enrollment over the past five years. So we're not always accepting the same amount of students. It's really dependent on the needs of the, in the district and needs in each individual grade level. So I'll work with the administrators, we'll talk, we'll say how many can you take so we don't overload any particular class. We have some grade levels that are more um, uh, often adding in students, grades seven and nine, um, but there are other grades we may be able to backfill in. We also don't have control over people moving into the district or moving out of the district. 
students who move out, uh, if there's still space in that grade, will then can be categorized as school choice. The next slide does show, though, the consistency of our total numbers. So you, you see, over the, especially over the past four years, um, we stayed at a relatively high number, high 270s, uh, low 280s. And this is very helpful for us in terms of our budget. So when we build our budget, we're looking at these numbers um, and we're, we're creating a budget based on our school contributions uh, for the number of students that we have each year. Um, the school choice numbers won't always be what they are. Um, we know that there's many building projects in town, many homes going in, apartments, so we know that those numbers may fluctuate over time. Um, we know that we'll be backfilling our graduating class. We have 23 seniors for school choice, so we know to keep our numbers at the same level that we'll be replacing those students. If we can reasonably expand that, then we certainly will. But the downside of choice is if we don't meet that target, if we can't um, bring in as many students as we've had before, we will lose funding and they'll come off our school contributions, which will in essence decrease the amount of money we're able to put into our own budget, which is pretty substantial, and you'll see that in a few minutes. So we just want to make sure the town is aware that if we do get an influx of new students into the district, that they'll be attending the school here, but we may not have the space to continually add numbers, and that may happen in seven and nine, but it also may happen in other grade levels as well if we can't fill in those spaces. I thought it was important just to show some information about our ESSER funding. So we have received ESSER grants uh, over the past couple of years. Um, we hope to be using these grant, this grant funding, ESSER 3 through FY24. We've been working really hard to spread this money out so it's, we don't establish a cliff uh, when we run out of money that we say, oh, now we need these positions, but now we've created such a financial cliff. Uh, we've been following all DESE and federal guidelines in terms of drawing down the accounts. Um, so we've been receiving ESSER funds, and the town has received ARPA funds. So it's just another way of getting state and federal funding. Um, so I, I just wanted to you know, point that out. I think it's important to know that you know, we've been taken care of, which is good, and we've addressed needs, and the town is also addressing their needs through the ARPA funding. What have we used the ESSER funds for? Uh, staff. Uh, a lot of money has gone into staff, mental health staff, our English language learner staff, special ed and our support staff, technology. We've bought Chromebooks and laptops for our teachers. Um, we've uh, identified staff to help address learning gaps, such as tutors, English language tutors, and uh, academic tutors. We bought uh, instructional supplies and materials and added curriculum. Uh, we've enhanced our mental health program through social worker interns and a family success plan that works with uh, families and students who are in need. And we've funded our Summer Wildcat Academy. So we've done a lot with, honestly, relatively a small amount of money compared to other districts. So I think we're, we're putting it to good use. I just want to show, I, th I think, you know, we're getting a, a big bang for our buck in West Bridgewater. I uh, just wanted to show the good news is that the, um, the town is only, of the town's fully funded budget of over 36 uh, million in FY21, uh, almost 13,766,000 was dedicated to the school district. So that's 37.9% of the town's budget has gone to the school system in FY21. And in FY22, that did increase a little bit to 38.6% of the town budget. So we know we're an integral part of the town. Uh, we want to work with all town departments in the town. We appreciate the funding we get. And I just wanted to show you know, where we stand at this moment. Chapter 70 um, is funding. There's a description there, but basically chapter 70 programs and funding goes from the state to the towns. It doesn't go directly to the schools. It goes to the towns. And it's a state aid program to public and elementary secondary schools. It provides state aid to support op school operations. It also establishes minimum spending requirements for each school district and minimum requirements for each municipality share of school cost. This year, the governor's budget is up 8.8% uh, with an increase of 485.3 million. 
And it's, it's great to report that West Bridgewater's portion of that is a tremendous increase to $744,672. So it's a tremendous increase in Chapter 70 funding for us. This presentation will be posted later um, so people can click on the active links and take a look at more information if they choose. I thought it was important to show where our Chapter 70 money has gone or how much money we've received over the past 10 years. So you'll see from FY14 to the proposed governor's budget of FY23, we do see fluctuations in the amounts. Some years they are at a uh, state minimum, um, but over the past few years we received 412,000 last year, and again the 744,000 this year. The increase over 10 years to the town has been almost 2.5 million more dollars that goes into the town budget. And it shows you the 10 year average of an average of $276,000 a year and the five year average of 330,000. So. And then this just shows you incrementally in the bar graph where the, how that money has increased over time. I think uh, we want, we've always talked, this slide has been around for a while. I remember sitting in the seats and seeing the slide, but in terms of where our school funding comes from. So it's basically broken into three pieces of the pie. The first is the West Bridgewater Town contributions. That's basically tax revenue, which equals about 60%. State funding, which is our chapter 70, has been averaged over the years of 25%. And our school contributions of school choice grants and revolving accounts has equaled approximately 15%. The next slide is going to show you um, how that school contribution is broken up even further. So our school contribution for this year is $2,444,381. The biggest percent of our school contribution is school choice funding, which we've budgeted $1.5 million dollars. Circuit Breaker, uh, which is special ed reimbursement, uh, about $356,000. Our revolving accounts, which is money we take in from um, athletic revolving, from our preschool program, is $270,000. And then special ed uh, and grant funding is about $316,000. So, all of those make up our school contributions. This is funding that we're not asking the town for. The town will provide us uh, a set amount of money. This is in addition to the money. So basically this is money that the school district is bringing in, raising, or putting into the budget on our own that will help defer the cost of the town budget. Just wanted to show in, a, in this graph in the next few um, pie charts that our, how our averages in the different categories have increased and decreased over the past three years. So in our FY21 budget, you'll see that the town's proportion of funding is a 59.5%, which is pretty much the average that we talked about over many years. And the other averages of Chapter 70 at 25.8 and school contributions at 14.7 are pretty consistent. If you look next at FY22, you see that our Chapter 70 money has increased. And again, that last year was $412,000 more. So now we're up to 27.2% of our budget comes from Chapter 70. And the town's contribution drops to 58.8%. And you can see the, the overall numbers there. And finally, for our FY23 budget, Chapter 70 has increased once again to 30.1%, and the town contribution has dropped to 56%. Uh, so it just shows how that pie is changing a little bit over time. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but I think it's just important to note that the percent that the town has to provide has gone down because the state has, uh, has provided us with more funding. Um, chapter 70. Um, like I've said before, each year does come to the town. It does not come directly to the schools. Basically, it's new money that the town gets, um, their proportionate amount of funding. Um, 
we've seen an increase in the chapter 70 and therefore a decrease of about 3.5 percent over the past three years in the town's um, contribution. The state clearly has identified that there's a direct need to increase their funding to West Bridgewater. Um, they're looking at our numbers. They have a very comprehensive formula that they use to calculate this. So they see there's a need. We talked about in the past, and we're going to talk about again tonight, there is a direct correlation between our Chapter 70 funding and the per pupil expenditure funding. We need this money. And the district is in need of more money to support the programs and supports for our students. Okay, per pupil expenditure. Um, in a nutshell, what it is, it's basically everything we put into our state reports and they take everything at their end of the report and then they will spit out a number that is our per pupil average um, per, for each student, how much we spend on each student. Now, I checked even today that the last time Desi updated this was October 28th of 2021. Um, we're hoping that they can update these numbers soon, but that's why you'll see only as recent as FY20. So when you look at some of the comparisons like we did in the past, I think it's important to show of the 404 districts in FY19, we were 23rd from the bottom in our per pupil expenditure. In FY20, we were eighth from the bottom in the state. When you look at it in our southeastern mass region, FY19, fifth from the bottom, and FY20, fourth from the bottom. So again, we're getting a lot of bang for our buck in West Bridgewater, even though our per pupil expenditure is low. We wanted to look at other southeastern mass regions, so we did this chart. And it's hard, kind of hard to see, but if you look down the bottom left, you'll see West Bridgewater um, denoted with the red on the far left. And then we also wanted to show against more surrounding districts. Uh, again, the per pupil expenditure is low. And finally, a chart that we've shown before that shows us growing at a very similar rate to most districts, but then over the past few years decreasing while others continue to increase. Again, this is just a bit of information we wanted to share uh, about our funding and the need we have when there's additional funds to support our budget. Um, so again, th these links, you can there's plenty of opportunity to look and find lots of great information. Uh, we also talked about provided services and comparing us to other districts. We, you know, we wanted to show that in many different areas, we did not have the support staff that other districts had. Very like and similar districts, we seem to be have very fewer staff that could could work with our kids. So that that was something that we really addressed and wanted to address this year. Last year, when we met, we said there's certain things that we want to address using our ESSER grants. So the next slide will show you what were some of our needs last year and they were mental health special ed english language educators speech and language occupational therapists and reading and math specialists those are identified as the key areas of need and we talked about this with selectmen board of selectmen we talked about with the finance committee so i think it's good to report back how did we address these needs from last year so for mental health, we hired a middle senior high school social worker using a grant. It wasn't necessarily, it was, a, it was a separate grant. For special education, we hired a full-time middle senior high school learning center teacher, and we have put that into the budget. Again, trying to eliminate a, a massive cliff in the future. There are certain things we need to add in now that are needs. English language educators, we hired a full-time EL teacher using ESSER 3, so that will be for next year. We hired a 0.5 speech and language pathologist using ESSER 3, so now we've gone from 2 to 2.5. Occupational therapist, we hired a CODA, or Certified Occupational Therapist Assistant, um, using district funding, so that was important to put that into our budget. And we, unfortunately, had, were not able to hire any reading or math specialist, although we did hire some tutors this year using some of the ESSER funding. 
One of the areas we talk have talked about is our English language population. Uh, it is growing. These are only our English language students who are identified through our SIMS data. The FLEPs are the formally language, language formally, lang, wait a minute, help me out. Formal English, English learners, <laughs> thank you, um, are not included here. So they are also receiving uh, services, but you'll see that the number of students is growing. And remember, they have different amount of time they need to be seen, and they're also spread over four different buildings with four different schedules. So it is very difficult to schedule time with the students. In special education, um, we know that we must provide in the least restrictive environment a free and appropriate public education to all students aged 3 to 22, and the students' IEPs dictate the appropriate placements and services. The most unpredictable costs for special education are outside placements, and we'll talk a little bit more in a minute about that, because we can't meet the needs in the district. What we're attempting to do through the additional staff we've hired is build capacity within our district so we don't have to send students out of district because then that cost is much more unpredictable. Uh, transportation also is a huge variable that can increase exponentially and it's really hard to find transportation for these students. Currently, approximately 1.2% of our population is placed in our district placements. Uh, but that represents about $2 million, or about 11% of our FY23 budget. Circuit Breaker, which is money we receive from the state, which goes into our school contributions, is available to supplement the local budget for tuitions above $45,000. However, it hasn't been fully funded. <coughs> so the number is there. We do receive money, um, but it's not enough to fully compensate us. Um, This chart just shows you uh, some of our out different types of programs we send our students to. Uh, they fall into different mm -hmm. categories. This is the same chart as last year, but unfortunately the, the items to the right, the cost, have only increased. So we have Massachusetts public school programs. For example, it's a program we send students to at East Bridgewater. We have collaborative schools, and we have non-public private special education programs. And you can see the cost associated with them. Again, we need to fit the students and send them to the best placement for them, and that's where they should go. These are programs that are designed for them, um, and we want to give them that program, but they are very expensive. And again, transportation. It's the responsibility of us to send students to these districts, depending on their needs, um, that the cost could be very expensive, uh, depending you know, if there's wheelchair vans or depending on the distance traveled. Cost could range anywhere from 15000 to 92000 That's what we have in our budget. Um, again, same slide as before, just adding on more numbers. At this time, we're going to start to go through our budget and talk about line item. Um, this is a draft of our FY23 budget for the school committee members to view and ask questions. Uh, we'll review them for any questions you may have line by line. A reminder that the increase uh, could be deceiving as amounts are generally small in the difference. And when you're looking at the cover sheet, the, although it may show a larger percent increase, then the amount of money really is not that large potentially. Outside of special of staff and our special education increases, all the other lines add up to about $45,000 of changes from, from in some of the other line items. Um, this represents about 0.31% of our asked increase. And just to put it in perspective, um, one of the increases we have, uh, we have additional students going to Norfolk Aggie next year or, or applying to go there. Um, if we took that out, the it would actually be a decrease in all the other lines. Um, after we review the budget tonight, it will go back to the school committee on March 7th for the full budget will be shared with the members of the finance committee and the selectmen after we go after is approved by the school committee. So, Mrs. Grant. So after we go through line by line, uh, Mr. Bodwell will finish his presentation and summarize um, the overall impact of the budget. 
So I'm just going to start, unless anyone has a question, right off the bat on the cover page. I'll just start going through the detail. And please stop me if you have a question on any of the changes. The first line is for the school committee. There were no changes. Superintendent's office. Uh, finance and legal. The district technology. And I'm just going to note there is an increase in district technology. Um, mm -hmm. In previous years, we have been underfunded. If you take a look at the actual fiscal year 21 cost was about 87,000. Fiscal year 20 was 90,000. Um, to date, that line item already has $95,000 of expense in it. So we're requesting about 97,000 for next year. Um, principal budgets teaching services I'm going to just mention a couple of the significant uh, pieces that increase in teaching services um, the main one honestly are this is a subline and you need to combine the four lines that contain the accounts for our substitute teachers We've budgeted 110,000 for substitute teachers for fiscal year 23. To date, this year with five months to go, we've already spent $96,000. A majority of these substitute costs are long-term subs. Uh, our fiscal year 21 cost for substitutes was $127,000. So we need to make sure that this is funded enough. It's another number that's difficult to um, pin down, but, but we certainly are experiencing a, a high rate of long-term sub usage. And these could be for maternity leaves, illness, injury, um, so they're very unpredictable. Um, another line to point out in this budget are the, con the contractual benefits piece of the budget. This year it's dropped by $47,000 roughly. And that this line item is where the retirement payouts are housed. So it's going to differ based on the number of teachers and employees retiring, um, as well as all non-union raises uh, go into this line. Professional development has no change. Instructional supplies. Questions instructional technology. Uh, just an update under tech maintenance. We have uh, moved the salary for our director of technology into this line item. He had previously been a part time teacher as well, so we are now. Um, he is full-time tech maintenance. To offset that salary, we have funded this line item significantly with choice and evening school revolving funds. Um, the tech maintenance account also has any outside, an outside contract vendor to maintain and monitor the network. Um, these costs, as well as Chromebook leases, system repairs, this line um, includes uh, shared services with the town. So we pay about 70% of the salary for the outside contractor, and the town pays about 30% of the salary. That's included in this line. And just as a reminder, when uh, Mr. Bodwell went through his presentation, our budget is about 39%. Our department of the school is about 39% of the town budget. We're picking up significantly more of the cost uh, for technology. Guidance and testing. We have two retirements in the guidance department, so we anticipate you know, hiring at a lower step. English uh, ESL services has increased, again, in line with our increased needs. 
Medical services. A transportation. I'm included in the transportation line is a McKinney Vento, which is transportation for um, homeless students. This is a, a very unpredictable. Um, we seem to be running, as you can see, $23,000 in one year, 36 in the next year. Um, so we feel like we have um, budgeted a reasonable amount for this. Um, our transportation of buses line, that's for a regular day transportation. Um, our bus contractor is uh, Lucini. And in fact, uh, they just won the bid for the next three-year contract with a two-year option. Um, he, he did not raise a price for the first for the fiscal year 23, which is wonderful. He held it in line. Um, we were pleased to see that. Uh, this line also includes transportation for um, our agricultural students. Uh, this next line is sports. And um, the extracurricular clubs and programs are listed as supervisors in the student body activity. Um, you'll notice that line has increased um, significantly for next year. And it's based on the participation, increased participation we've seen this year now that we're no longer hybrid. Um, and that's nice to see. Custodial services. Heating utilities, you know, that's another. We look back at three years worth of data and we're trying to right size the amount that we budget in all of our utilities. Um, electric is one that we were falling below the average of what we needed, so there has been an increase in that. Maintenance of grounds. When you look at maintenance of building, we tend to look at the entire section um, in total because these line items are very close and um, it, it's almost indistinguishable of where to charge costs. But if you notice on high school heating repairs, we've had significant costs um, for the high school uh, boiler. It has been running for eight years and Unfortunately, it appears to be end of life. We have three boilers. They share the load. When one boiler is not functioning, it increases the load on the remaining boilers and actually decreases their expected life. Um, it's disturbing to know that the boiler is like eight years old and we've spent significant amounts of money fixing it. However, East Bridgewater had the same company that was through the state contracts for their new building and their boiler lasted one year. So um, this is something that we intend to put on the capital budget uh, request for the town. Maintenance of equipment. The insurance line is controlled by the town. They uh, go out to bid for our insurance. Um, it has fluctuated more than expected this year due to um, unemployment costs incurred by school department uh, employees during COVID. The next two pages are not funded. Out of district tuition is the cost for seven students to go to Norfolk Aggie. Um, we have, that's up two additional students from the previous year. Special Ed Administration. Uh, special Ed Teaching Services. I'd um, like to mention our instructional assistance. This is another category that, um, you know, it appears that we have saved significant money in one line item and gone, are budgeting significantly more in another. We move our instructional assistance between the buildings according to the student needs. Um, and, you know, as you can see, we are ha experiencing more need at the high school level. So we're budgeting more on that line item. In addition, um, we have hired 
two additional, I believe two, yeah, two and a half additional instructional assistants, um, and those are required for to service our special needs students. Sped services. <coughs> we have hired two new behavior techs representing the increase in this line item and again that is because of the needs of our students um. <clears throat> the psych services special education transportation again has increased and you know it's just due to the the expensive nature of the transportation and the number of students requiring transportation. And the last one is our out of district tuitions. Um, the increase in our out of district tuition costs has decreased over the last two years, if, if that makes sense. And as um, Mr. Bodrell mentioned earlier, we've made a concerted effort to try to build capacity in-house to service our students and we can already feel the effects of that we've increased some instructional assistance and learning center aspects and thus you know we're seeing a smaller increase in the out of place out of district placements now again this is at this point in time we can't control nor do we know who may or may not move in or out of district to change that number at any time. But we feel like we are moving in the right direction given our current population. Any questions? If you review it further and have any additional questions, feel free to call me. So I do have a question. I sat on, I sat on, sat on them all. Um, thank you, uh, Mrs. Grant, for for heading off all my questions <laughs> <laughs> ahead of time. Um, you, you hit everything that I had questions about, you know, the high school boiler um, and, and the sub lines. I do have, you know, I'm nervous. I have some concerns, especially looking at the trends for the mm -hmm. subs and that we're already at, I think you said 91,000 for this year. Um, you know, I'm worried about the budget for next year for budgeting. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you said it was 110,000 for for this for fiscal year 23. Yeah. Um, I'm, we're anticipating 110,000. Yeah, and if we're, we're already at 91, you know, I, I mean, you you said that as well. That right. It's just so variable. Um, and then when we think about the out of district placements, I mean, I know as a special educator that that is so variable and it could change tomorrow. And we talk about mm -hmm. this um, all of the time. And you talk about it at every budget meeting. Um, and I know that, you know, we expect to build capacity slowly and slowly see the out of district numbers come down. And so I think, and I know, because I took a sneak peek at the rest of the, the, um, presentation. I know that Mr. Bodwell is going to talk about this, but my question is, do you feel that this budget will adequately meet our needs for next year, or is it cutting it close? It's definitely cutting it close. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't see anywhere that we can cut that won't impact our students and their education significantly this year. Okay. Um, I would have liked it to be a slightly <laughs> well, that, higher that, percentage as we went through, but you know we understand um, yeah. and, and that, that, that we have to be careful with the town and that right. we're looking to we manage the budget carefully. But it's those unexpected costs. Right. If if we have move-ins and four or five students require um, out of district placement, we or will you have be a teacher that needs to be out out or a two or sub. three. Yeah. We, you know, we may be back to town meeting in October. Okay. That's just the reality of it. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Great job. Um, so when we look at the overall FY23 budget summary, um, we look at the FY22 town appropriation of $14,474,263. Uh, the proposed 
appropriation we're asking for is $15,258,973, which we're asking for an increase for FY23 of $784,667, which represents a 5.42% increase. Not included in our request are our school contributions, which are again over $2.44 million, bringing our total budget number uh, to $17,703,318. So that's that's the, the big number, that's, that's where we stand in terms of our request in our needs-based budget. Um, as has been talked about, they're, they're, they're all needs. There, there are no wants in here, there are no wishes. These are things that we absolutely need to function um, to move ourselves forward, but also preparing for the future. How we break down these different increases, um, our special education has, is asking for $85,826, which represents a 0.6% of the 5.42%. The, the teacher's COLA step and track is an estimate of about $422,000, which is 2.9% of our increase. Additional staff, and I'll talk more about those in a minute, but these are staff that are necessary to help soften or lessen the financial cliff. So the things that we've had to add to our budget, because if we don't, there'll be a massive cliff at the end, represents 1.2%, and the net remaining increase of $45,388 is a 0.31%, but then again, if you took out that Norfolk Aggie, just for comparison, it would be a net decrease. So that brings us to the 784000 So this looks at the increases. A special ed increase on FY21, the, the district had asked for $266,000 more than the year before. Last year we asked for $182,500 for an increase, and this year we're asking for $85,826. We know and understand that this number could fluctuate. We, um, we want to make sure we're, these are the needs we have, but these numbers could change literally overnight. The COLA step and track, these are estimated contractual obligations that must be paid. So we don't have a choice on these. Um, these are contractual obligations, which again, makes up 2.9% of that 5.42. In terms of additional staff needed, these are staff that we need to operate our schools and to build capacity within our schools. Um, special education, it's going to save our district money. If we can't support them here in school, they they're quite possibly would be students who would need to be placed out of district and we would incur not only tuition costs but also a transportation costs. So within our budget, there are additional two behavior techs two and a half instructional assistants which serve as one-to-ones with students and a special education learning center teacher at the middle senior high school. All designed to build the capacity within our school and to support our students the best we can. And then it's just the, the remaining is the net increase and decrease which I explained is uh, through some of the ups and downs within the remainder of the budget. I, did, I had a slide very similar to this last year, and we still have needs. So the needs are not fully addressed in this budget. Um, fortunately, we do have ESSER funds, and we've been very judicious in our use of these funds, uh, and we will continue to do, throw, do so through FY23 and hopefully FY24. But our needs exist in terms of a middle senior high school social worker to address the mental health needs of students. Right now we're planning on using hopefully grant funding if that comes through. If not, we would use ESSER 3. An English language teacher to maintain the required minutes for our students through ESSER 3. A part-time elementary special ed teacher to, to address disabilities in the classroom using ESSER 3. A part-time speech and language teacher, again, to meet the IEP goals using ESSER 3. And a part-time school psychologist slash team chair that will complete the required testing and chairing, team meetings to present funding, um, again, through grant funding or ESSER 3. This is approximately $218,000 more that, again, we are paying for using grants and including ESSER. 
So I think it's it's important to know this. I'm sure if I asked our principals, there there are more needs that are that are here. There, are, we've talked about reading specialists. We've talked about having more mental health professionals at the elementary schools. So there are continuing needs. This does not solve all the concerns that we have, but it's getting us into that more proactive, strategic, innovative place that we want to be. And what we need is we have, we have the existing staff, we'll need these additional staff. And we will pay for it using funding, but like this year we're asking for that 175, we'll come back next year asking for more because we need it. So we're asking for the support, support of the, the, the school committee and the town to, to accept our budget as presented and to meet the needs of our kids and staff to make this school system the best it can be. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Bogle. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? I do. <laughs> um, I'll make it quick. Um, so I appreciate that we're, um, that the budget really is conservative. It's very conservative in terms of um, the town appropriation. Um, you know, I'm nervous looking at all of the things that we're funding through ESSER in terms of fixed costs that, um, you know, or costs that will continue, the staffing. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, just, I'm actually looking at, at slide 18, um, if you want to take a look at that. Um, it's the picture, sorry, it's, a, it's the graph of the Chapter 70 funding. Um, so I'm just thinking into the future. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but Chapter 70 is calculated based on, a, it's a pretty complicated formula, right? <laughs> and, but when you really um, simplify it, it's based on high need students, mm -hmm. really, and town demographic. So if we're looking at, you know, we get more money based on the number of students who are English language learners and the number of students um, and families who are low income and the number of special education students. And so I'm assuming that if our Chapter 70 funding is increasing by that amount, that our foundation budget, as dictated by the state, is also increasing. Mm -hmm which means that the needs of our students are increasing pretty significantly based on this chart. But then when we look at the pie charts that you had put, um, I, I don't remember where they are, I think it's chapter uh, number 23, when you look at the decreasing, that orange piece of that town contribution, it looks like we're absorbing the cost of the chapter 70, or we're kind of absorbing that into our budget in order to keep the budget down and keep the cost down to the town, which during a pandemic I completely appreciate. But I'm really nervous moving forward because I think, especially I think we all know we have this, this huge development going in on Scotland Street. We don't know who's moving in. We know that our, our school choice numbers are going to go down at, at any given point. I mean, I think it's very conservative to, to budget an increase of 86000 for out of district. Um, because you know somebody could move in in that development as soon as it opens and and completely tank the budget. So, you know I am just thinking about the future and I'm thinking about when those ESSER funds go away, how much it will cost, um, and that those truly are needs, um, as indicated by Chapter 70. Chapter 70 is is an equitable minimum, mm -hmm. right? I mean it that's is. the minimum of, and we're not a bare minimum. No. District. We don't want to be a bare minimum district, so I just think that's something to really be aware of. It I is. guess it's that, not really a question as much as it's is my understanding correct. No, your understanding is absolutely correct. It, it is. Um, we are trending in an area that we need to, you know, increase, continue to increase our funding. The state is doing so, but we need to provide these services for our students, and we we have that gap that that okay. we need to make sure we address it. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Um, I would just like to um, thank Mr. Bodwell, Mrs. Grant, principals, Mrs. Marble, uh, for all the work that goes into this. I, I know that it's uh, just uh, a ton, a ton of time, but I also want to take a second and thank um, Mr. Yo and Ms. Dragonetti for the amount of time they put in. Um, we did something a little different this year as far as We've uh, tried to make things a little bit easier throughout the town 
because our budget is, is, is large, our budget is sometimes confusing, um, and we've, uh, Mr. Yo and Mrs. Dragonetti, along with Mrs. Grant and Mr. Bodwell, have met with um, the Finance Committee back in December a couple times, and uh, members of the uh, Selectman Board, to try to let them uh, know or ask questions about our budget so that they have a better understanding of it so that we go into these March meetings and there's, there's a little bit more understanding and it's not just the same questions year after year after year. Um, so, I mean, everybody deserves, uh, you know, a lot of compliments here for their, their time that was spent on this. Uh, just by looking at this, this is the, probably in the last, you know, five, ten years that I've been here, the well thought out, well, uh, the, the whole position of this budget, you know, there's really, you know, other than are, are we really close to what we uh, need and what we don't need, you know, how are we going to handle it? And um, I just think that you guys did an exceptional job of, you know, laying out what we need and how, uh, how we get, need to get there. And we, with the town's help that we need to get there, that we're not asking for over 50% of the town's budget. You know, we're, you know we're, we're trying to make this thing work and we're trying to work together with the town. Um, and I think that went a long way with uh, the meetings back in December and trying to explain everything. So everybody involved needs a, you know, a good congratulations and thank you for the time and effort um, that was put in. And then hopefully this will make things go a little bit more smooth in March. Um, so that's, you know, my two cents on the whole thing. But um, I'm hoping that, you know, back in Mar uh, December, this, uh, this is going to make a tremendous help as we move forward. Um, as we get closed up here, does anybody have anything before we uh, close up the meeting? No? We good? All right. Moving on to the public comment. Members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student or employee confidentiality can be addressed during the public comment. Seeing none. Um, we would, uh, let's see, we have our, uh, the, to get a uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, our next meeting will be Monday March 7th, 6.30 here in the Learning Commons. Um, can we have a motion to adjourn? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.